grace, peace, and mercy to you. Amen. What are you excited about? Is it food, sports, go blue, or anything else? Maybe you are excited that Christmas is only 164 days away and stores already have stuff to buy. Now take a second, think about it. What makes you smile? What makes you happy when you are thinking about it or doing it? On the count of three, I want everyone to shout and tell me what you are excited about. One, two, three. I heard a lot of things. But some of you are not very excited about the things you are passionate about. Now, my Tuesday Bible class has a slight advantage over the rest of you in knowing what excites me. But you could always join us on Tuesday mornings in person at 9.30 in the senior room or follow us on Facebook because we broadcast it live. But trail running, that is what makes me happy. Of course, that is outside being principal here, married to my wonderful, wonderful wife, Rebecca, of 17 years yesterday, and the father of two amazing boys. I love when I'm out on the trails, getting some miles in. Now, I know what you're thinking. Running, dirt, and hills. Doesn't sound like fun. But let me tell you why I love it. The first reason is, if it, my clicker works, walking. You get to walk when you're in a ultra marathon. You get to walk up hills, you get to walk down hills, you get to walk in between hills. It's encouraged to walk during long distance races. Even the elites get to walk during these races. And then the best part, you get to walk through aid stations, which is the second reason. Aid stations, food. You're encouraged to eat food. And you must eat food. When you're on the trails for 30 plus miles, you have to have that nutrition and those calories to keep you going, otherwise you bonk. And the last reason is the finish line. When you finish, you know you have accomplished something that many people will never even try. 1% of the world will run a marathon, but 0.001% will run an ultra marathon. That's anything over 26.2 miles. Take a moment and watch this finish line of a race that happened a few weeks ago.
this was at Western States Endurance Run. A race that used to be for horses, but after a rider had their horse stop moving, they decided the next year they would do the entire 100 miles on foot and to do it in less than 24 hours. The Western State is one of the mecca races for all elite ultra runners. Out of the thousand who, who qualify, meaning they have to run certain races in a specific time limit to have a shot to run this race each year, only 369 will make it to the starting line. This past year, 86% of those who started completed the 100.2 miles in the 30-hour time limit. There were two runners who ran the entire race, but officially were over the time limit. The rest did not finish, either missed cutoff times or pulled themselves due to injury or not feeling well. Now picture is Jim Walmsley the back-to-back -back Western State champion. What you cannot make out in this picture is his finishing time, 14 hours and nine minutes with some change. This beat his course record that he set last year by 20 minutes. Look at his face. He isn't just happy because he won or because he broke his course record or the fact that he is done and now he gets to sit. He is super excited because he gets to do and gets paid to do what he loves. This is typical of how Jim finishes all of his races with a huge smile, walking in, slapping hands. Usually he's winning the race too because he's really good. And a second is a video of the last official placer who ran the race in 29 hours, 59 minutes, and 38 seconds just getting in before that 30 hour time limit. As you watch, I want you not to just focus on Lane, the runner, he's in blue, but his crew, the people around him, the thousands of people watching, which includes the top elite runners that finished 12 to 14 hours before. At Western States, this is called the golden hour. The excitement is not just for the runners, but for everyone involved in these races. You can run any length of miles on your own, but it is so much better when you have people to run with. Now, let me add a fourth reason why I love running. The elites. The elites are just as encouraging as those running with you in the back of the pack. This is a true story. When my friends and I started running back in 2013, it was because we were all bigger guys and knew that we should do some sort of exercise. Well, talking about back in November of 2012, we were deciding which race we were going to run in March. We love running, but not in the winter. As soon as we found what race, we also came up with our running club name, Spare Tire Running Club. We figure it fit our slender profiles to a T. So we started running and of course people loved our shirts and we had many conversations with people. There was a local runner we would see all the time at, at these races. At one race, a Corps Marshal directed us wrong and that was everyone went the wrong way except for this one runner who was in first place. His name was Eric and he's an elite runner. He is the cross country and track coach at Lawrence Tech University. University. He knew where to go for this race because Lawrence Tech was one of the sponsors and it was on their campus and Eric was the returning champion. So while we were relaxing after the race, Eric was sitting by us and so we struck up a conversation and I was asking how he ran the right course. And he told me about he knew the place because he was working there. He asked about our shirts and said that he thought it was cool. He saw us at all these other races. Today, Eric is an honorary member of our Spare Tire Running Club and will wear our jersey at any race that he can. The same is true throughout the sport. The best runners care for any and all runners. So I have two questions for you. The first one, are you excited to come run an ultra marathon with me?
I see someone knows. But on the serious side though, the second question is more important today, and more important than any race or anything else we're excited about. That question is, are you excited to be here today? Are you excited to be able to praise God in his house? Are you, able, are you excited to be able to call yourself a Christian and to take on what that means? I hope you are excited, because I am. And here's what happens to us when we become excited for Christ and for our church. The battles will not seem as hard. It doesn't mean we won't have battles. In those 100 miles, there were so many little battles that every runner faces. Food, hydration, soreness, aches, pains, doubts, confusion, highs, and lows. But it won't be as hard as we think. When you are a runner at a race, you go through this thought process. Before the race, you think, why did I sign up for this? During the race, you think, I am never going to do this again. Then after the race, you're checking out the website for your next race. When you finish a race, you have won the battle. And we should be excited that we get to win the ultimate battle. Not because we are elite or even did anything, but because God loves us so much that he fought it for us and he won it for us. Think about the story of Joshua and Caleb in the Old Testament. You have the ten spies that brought back an evil report. They only saw problems. There was no way they saw anything positive, just every fear and challenge. But Joshua and Caleb were a little bit excited. They saw the giants and they saw the challenges. But when you're excited for Christ and you remember like they remember that God has a plan and that his plan is bigger than anything we can think of, Joshua and Caleb were right to be excited. They had it made. When you are excited about God, the gloom, the depression, the fear and doubt that you will encounter in your lives will find it hard to bring you down. Since we're not in heaven, we will have bad days. Look at Moses. He had his days of anger and frustration. I mean, he broke the tablets that God had written on himself, and he struck the rock instead of speaking to it. We will have bad days. We will have doubt. We will face death. But that should not worry us. On my desk in my office, I have a few items with Bible verses on them. One of my favorite is a plaque that I got from a parent when I left Holt Lutheran that says, Stand firm, be strong and immovable always, work enthusiastically for the Lord. For you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. This plaque means a lot to me. Because it came from a parent that rode me hard during my first year as a principal. And being a stubborn Lutheran Burke, I know I rode her hard too. We didn't always see eye to eye. Something changed three-fourths into the year. We had a coming to Jesus moment, if you want to put it that way. Using what I was taught to work, I put her to work. I gave her the permission to start a parent-teacher league, but that meant that I would have to work with her even more than our typical daily meetings to complain about something. It was during that last quarter as we started a PTL group that many didn't think we could do it because they had won so many years ago and it didn't work, so why try now? But through that, we became friends. Those bad, gloomy days weren't so dark anymore because she was excited working with me and creating something special for the school. And I was excited that she wasn't complaining anymore. To this day, we keep in touch and her kids are doing wonderful. Her daughter is an amazing dancer. The other plaque is mine and many others' favorite Bible verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to give you hope and a future. This verse reminds me that no matter what is going on, the gloomy days, the bad days, God's got it. You should have your own verses too, and if you need some, here are two that you could pick. Nehemiah 8.10, verse part B, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Or Romans 8.28, know all things work together for the good to them that love God. And the second thing that can happen when you are excited for the Lord, Others are drawn to what you have. This is what Christ meant when he told us to let our light shine before men. When you are happy, others will be drawn to you. A Sunday school teacher was questioning her pupils after a lesson on God's omnipotence. Now, children, she asked, is there anything God can't do? 
the pastor's son thrust his hand into the air. The teacher, feeling certain that he had missed the point of the lesson, asked half-heartedly, well, just what is it that God can't do? The boy replied, I heard Dad say yesterday that even God can't make everybody at this church happy. When you're excited, it spreads and grows in the lives of everyone you come into contact with. But the opposite is true. If you are a negative Nancy all the time, people may come to you, but they come to complain and be a company of misery. Just last night, I saw someone on the National Youth Gathering Facebook page post about a negative experience uh, because they had to empty their water bottles before they went inside to the stadium to praise God and have a free Toby Mac concert. From there, a chain about 20 other comments commented about something negative. Sorry, you are praising God and getting to see Toby Mac? I will trade with you in a second. But let's be real. Isn't that the case around here sometimes? We complain about this part of worship or that type of worship. We complain that we don't have enough money or we don't have a pastor that wants us. It is easy to get into that trap. We have to think big picture. We need to be excited that we get to share the Word of God into this community. We get to bring people closer to God or even introduce them to their Savior. We need to be excited for the volunteers we have around here that work so hard to make sure everything works smoothly every day. I was so excited last night when I saw pictures of the cleaning that our board of directors and volunteers did yesterday. If you can't see through the windows, drive around back, look into the far corner where a small jungle once was. Now DTE could actually get to their pole to work on. I'm super excited about our school boosters club that and all the items they want to do around the school and for the church. Did you notice the lack of potholes in the Beechwood parking lot? Thanks to some maintenance money and the booster club that was professionally done. The lines will be painted soon too. Do you know our neighbor, Mr. Howard? He's been living there since a small boy. But did you know he has helped us with ditch maintenance on Vinoy Road? Picking up trash that our neighbors leave out and keeps an eye on the building at night to make sure no one does it any harm. How exciting is it to have a neighbor like that? I'm super excited that we're going to be doing group runs on Wednesday evenings. You can even walk. The community is invited. I'm excited that next Saturday from 9 a.m. to 11, we, will, we, we, and we need more volunteers still, will be on the trails on our Wayne Road by Joy Road cleaning garbage so Wayne County Parks can get their equipment in there to clean out the overgrown trees and brushes, paint the bridges, and to make it look a lot better. It is a great time to be a member of St. Matthew. It is a great time to be living and worshiping in this community. How are we to reach out, educating and nurturing the people of Westland and surrounding area if we look like and act like how sour milk tastes? If we are to reach the loss, we must change. They want someone that is full of the joy of the Lord. Would you go to a doctor that has a depressed attitude or be coached by someone who thinks they will lose every game? If what you have from God does not lift you, excite you, stir you to celebrate, then the world will look at you and tell you, I don't want what you have. To this day, I have an image of a little kid who forgot to put their offering in the plate when the ushers came by. The offering was already up at the altar and the service was continuing on. All of a sudden, down the middle aisle, a child is running up to the front, shouting that they forgot to give their offering. That child was so excited to give to the Lord that it didn't matter that Pastor Fisher was in the middle of the service. He was going to give. This is a true story. I don't remember what year or who the child was, but that happened right here in this sanctuary. And Pastor Fisher gladly accepted the child's gift and put it in the offering plate. One of my favorite Bible verses is Matthew 10, 27. What I tell you in the dark, speak in the daylight. What is whispered in your ear, proclaim from the roofs. In some versions, proclaim is translated as to shout. As a teacher and a coach, I have a loud voice. It is because I am passionate about what I am doing. I am passionate about being here. I am passionate about the love of our Lord. I am passionate about the free gift we have because we need it. We have a reason to be excited, happy to celebrate our Lord today. He loves us. 
He made us new, and through Him we win every time. When we get this attitude of joy and excitement in our spirits, we will see this church, our families, and our lives to gr start to grow. How welcoming would it be for our future pastor to come to a place that is excited for the work of the Lord that we have been doing and will be doing, instead of someone coming in and only hearing about all of our problems? It is tough, and it takes God's grace to not let the devil enter doubt into our minds. But I pray that I and that we can win this fight and be excited that we are called Christians and that we are excited to spread the word of God, excited to be faithful followers. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.